Good morning, church. We're coming together as people who are one week closer to being reunited. Last week, we started a new series called Uncharted, where Rusty's looking at the book of Acts chapters one and two. We've asked our whole church family to read through the entire book of Acts just a few chapters a week. Jason's been adding video teachings to YouTube and to our website so that you can get a deeper look at the scripture that we're reading together. But if you didn't get a chance to start with us last week, it's not too late. I promise that it's gonna be worth the time that you put into it. So let me set the stage for this week a little bit. We're still in this unknown time between Easter and Pentecost. The disciples and other believers didn't really know what was coming next. But we know that those weren't wasted days. God was still speaking and he was still working in the world around them. And so the same is true for us. Downtime does not mean wasted time. And so if God's still speaking, are we listening? Let's pray into that together as we start today. Jesus, thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're faithful whenever other people are not. You never leave us. You're still speaking to us and you give us the path to walk on. And so we're just asking that you open our eyes to see all it is that you're doing and that we have the kind of courage it takes to step out and follow you. And so as we're learning today from your word, help us to see the way that it's all true for us today too. That you're doing the same thing in our world now that you were doing with the early believers as you started the birth of your church. We love you and we thank you for the way that you're personal and you're right here next to us, even if we're just sitting in our living rooms. Amen. Speak when you move, when you 
Hey everybody. So welcome to worship. I'm so glad you're taking some time to join us. We're in a season right now between Easter and Pentecost. And in the church here, it's kind of an in-between time. Easter is the time when you celebrate the resurrection. And Pentecost is the time when you celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. But in that in-between time, if you were to put yourselves in the shoes of those disciples, well, I think it's an important time for us. Honestly, they were at a time when they were trying to decipher the will of God, what's coming next. Like us, they were kind of blank as to what the future was supposed to look like. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day He was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles He had chosen, and after His suffering, He presented Himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that He was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and He spoke about the kingdom of God. And I guess that's really the focus we've got to have right now, a focus on saying, Lord, let Your kingdom come. Let Your will be done here, now, in us, in me, in my world, Lord. We need Your kingdom. Well, that time when, when the disciples were in that uncharted territory, not knowing what was next. That wasn't new for the people of God. In the Old Testament, 
there was a period between Passover and the Feast of Weeks. There was a time for the people to remember the wilderness wanderings. I think that's kind of where we are right now. Wilderness wandering, the time when they were in the desert, the time when they didn't know what was going to come next and they didn't know how long it was going to last. When you're in the wilderness, I think you need to ask this question. In fact, a few minutes from now, I'm going to ask you this question and, and, and invite you to really, really chew on it for a little bit. How do you remember the wilderness? Well, how they remembered the wilderness and how God remembered the wilderness were two very different things. How they remembered the wilderness was lack of food. How they remembered the wilderness was, we've got no water to drink. How they remembered the wilderness was marauding enemies that could swoop down on them at any time. How God remembered the wilderness. Let me just read this to you. It's in Jeremiah chapter 2. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and you followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Man, when God remembered the wilderness, He remembered it like a honeymoon. He remembered it like a groom taking his bride into a place where all they had was one another. He remembered it as a time when, when they learned new ways to be together and relate together in an intimate relationship, just they and God. And I think that's what God is trying to teach us right now. The fact is there are just some things God can't seem to say, or maybe we just can't seem to hear, except in the wilderness. Well, Jesus told them, He said, Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised you. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised you, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Which leads automatically to the question, when's that going to happen, Lord? You say in a few days. Do you mean a couple of days? Do you mean a lot of days? How long do we wait? Sound familiar? We're kind of in that boat right now. How long? How long until the shelter at home order is lifted? How long until the kids can return to a normal life and see their friends? How long until I can go back to work? How long? How long? How long? That's a question people ask all the time in Scripture. They call us followers, but the fact is there's a tendency we have to kind of want to skip ahead and, and, and know What's coming next before we actually get there? In Revelation chapter 6, there's a place where the people, even under the altar, they just cry out, Lord, how long? How long will this last? How long till we get back to normal? How long until we can worship together? Lord, how long? Well, Jesus kind of gives them a non-answer to their question. Maybe Jesus begins to answer the question they should have been asking instead of the question that was actually on their minds. He said this to them. He said, It is not for you to know the times or the dates my Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The question maybe is not how long. Maybe the question ought to be, how will I know? How will I know when I'm ready? How will I know that, that I'm at the place you need me to be in order to take me to the next level? The fact is, God was going to be at work in that time in His precious friends. God is at work in us right now. One of my favorites is in Philippians chapter 2. You've heard me talk about it before. How it says that it is God who is at work in us both to will and to do according to His good pleasure. The question is not how long. The question is, how will you know when you're ready to move on to the next thing God has in mind for you? Jesus says you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. But in the meantime, in the meantime, you're just not ready yet. So here's a question that I'm going to be asking you later on. How will you remember this time? Some people think of waiting as wasting. 
wasting time when we could be doing something, wasting time when we could be accomplishing something, wasting time when we could be earning something. But God was, in fact, at work in them, just like He is at work in you. So another question we're going to wrestle with later on is, what is it that God is trying to say to you now in this time? What is God trying to communicate with you now? I want to take you to a passage, though. It's Psalm 90, verse 12. Most of the Psalms, most of the Psalms come from David's pen, but this one comes from the pen of Moses. We don't know exactly what the circumstance was when Moses was putting Psalm 90 on paper. But a big part of what Moses was known for was the wilderness wandering, coming out of Egypt, going toward the promised land, and that, that time in between, that time when they were having to build the plane even while they were flying it. And in Psalm 90, verse 12, Moses says this, Teach us, Lord, it's prayer, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That may be one that you want to memorize during this time. That may be one that you want to hide in your heart. That may be one you want to really hold on to. Teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I looked it up. I looked it up. And, and, and that teach us word, that's not a head word. That's a hands word. That's not a word about acquiring new knowledge or new intellectual understanding. That is a word, teach us. That is a word about acquiring a new skill, getting good at something. Teach us. Give us the skill to. Give us the, give us the cunning to number our days. I looked that one up too. Number our days is not an arithmetic word. It's a word of weighing and evaluating and placing a placing a value on our days. I don't know, maybe it seems to you that some days are worth more than others. Mm. So that may be something to really think about as we go on. Teach us, Lord, to number our days, to weigh them, to value them, and to recognize, to recognize that this is not just any other day. This is a day that you have made, Lord. Hmm. I remember when I was a kid, I remember when I was a kid that there would be times when I would have to go to bed so I could get up. Think Christmas Eve. Think the day before your birthday. Think the night before you leave on a vacation. When you're so excited and yet you're so exhausted. And the people who love you, the people who know more than you know, know enough to tell you, go to bed. Go to bed, turn off the lights, and lay there even if you tell yourself you can't fall asleep because I know that you're not ready for what's coming next. You have to go to bed so that you can get up. Paul had an interesting turn of phrase for that with his friends in Ephesus. He said in Ephesians 5, 14, he says, Wake up, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. Christ will shine on you. To his friends in Rome, he said, Wake up from your slumber. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. There's this immediacy. There's this time. There's this, there's this coming moment. And you don't know when it is. And you don't know what it's going to take to get ready. But you know that someone who loves you knows that there's preparation that needs to happen in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, and in your strength. Paul borrowed that idea from Isaiah. Four times Isaiah had things like this, Arise, shine, your light has come, the glory of the Lord rises upon you. The fact is, we are in a time, and no matter how you slice it, this is a time that the Lord is wanting to use in your life and mine. A time that the Lord is wanting to use in the life of our church. A time that the Lord is wanting to use in the life of our community, the life of our nation. And honestly, a time in our world that may be a turning point time. It may be a hinge point time. So you can try to rush it if you want. But maybe, just maybe, the question is not how long. Maybe the question is, how will I know? How will I know when I'm ready? How will I know when I'm ready to move on from where I am to where you want to take me? So I've got a couple of questions that I'd really love for you to chew on. In fact, 
this time has given us a whole new way to relate to one another across the Word of God. Maybe this is a time when you would want to pause the video and actually discuss these questions with whoever you get to watch this with. Maybe, maybe a spouse, maybe somebody you love, maybe with your kids. So here are the questions. You ready? One, how will you remember these days? How will you remember these days? Remember we were talking about how the children of Israel, when they thought back on the wilderness, they didn't think about the good parts. All they could think about was the times when they were hungry. All they could think about were the times when they didn't have enough water. All they could think about were the times when there was no toilet paper on the shelves. Oh no, wait, that's us. Anyway, how will you remember these days? Let me give you another way to think about that. How will these days be remembered by the people you love? Because I can't help but think that years from now, we'll be sitting around a Thanksgiving table, we'll be sitting around a Christmas table, and our children where our children's children will remember these days differently than we do. Maybe all we'll remember is lost wages. Maybe all we'll remember is the grief that comes or the fear or anxiety that comes when, whenever you hear someone cough, you think, oh no, they've got it. I don't know. Your kids might remember that was the time when dad was home. Maybe your kids will remember, that was the time when we learned this new game, or we put together a puzzle, or we, you can fill in the blank, right? How will you, how will the people you love remember these days? Question number two. What will you wish that you had done during this time? Because there's coming a day, and I don't know when it is, there's coming a day when the all clear will be sounded. There's coming a day when the shelter in place will be lifted. And when that day comes, I know there are going to be people, myself included, who say, man, if I'd have known it was this close to being over, I would have done this or I would have done that. So what is it that you're going to wish you had done during this time? That's an important question because when you start to number your days, when you start to weigh out those days and value those days, none of them are wasted. Here's the third question. What is God saying to you in these days? Because trust me, God is speaking. You may not be able to hear if you're binge watching something. You may not be able to hear because there's so much other noise going on. But this is a question worth spending some time on. What is God trying to say to you in these days? I've got a prayer for you in that. It's the Samuel prayer. It's 1 Samuel chapter 3 when Samuel was a little boy and he heard this voice, but he didn't know who was speaking. And it says this in, in 1 Samuel chapter 3. It says, when you hear the voice again, here's what you should say. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. What if you were to take some time right now? In fact, would you join me in this prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, we just want to quiet our hearts. We just want to listen, Lord, knowing that you are speaking, that you have no intention of wasting these days in our lives or the lives of the people we love. So Lord, in Jesus' name, as you teach us to number our days, would you teach us also to listen to what it is you're trying to lead in? Father, we don't know when it's going to be over. We don't know how long it's going to take. But can you pray this prayer? Lord, we will leave that in your hands. Lord, we will trust you with the when. We will trust you with the how long. We will trust you to come with the gift of your Holy Spirit to fill our lives and our hearts with your comfort and with your power. Come, Lord Jesus. I love you guys, and I love being your pastor. See ya.